rely on what you're going to see here. This is a wrinkle. A uh, smoke ring is not a series of spinning, you know, things around this point here. It is a wrinkle like you would put in a carpet by doing that and making a wave go through the carpet, except it's in three dimensions and wrapped around. So as a result, when a smoke ring moves through the clear air, it absorbs clear air on the periphery of it in a layer that goes in, in, in to the inside and then does a reversal like uh, yin and yang and comes out pushing smoke ahead of it. And so a shell of smoke, a shell of smoke, a pipe, comes out the back. These things here are a rough approximation of what makes an atom or an electron. They are not particles, they are waves in a medium. All right. I have made them bounce off each other like particles, shooting them rapidly so that they hit and bounce, bounce off of tables and still keep their shape. These are why scientists think that light acts like a particle and like a wave, and so physicists say, well, let's call it a wavicle. It's because it has periodic motion, uh, yet it defines a very tight field like a particle would. This is a device that I uh, use to do the rest of what you're going to see here. It's a plastic pipe, um, plexiglass pipe, and uh, I've just made it so it'll make smoke rings with a piece of um, shower cap uh, stuck on the back as a rubber membrane, and I pull it and pop it loose, and I get 70 to 90 miles an hour out of the little donut. Same thing you can do. You're going to see here uh, in a bright section uh, where I have a smoke cloud, an oil, an oil vapor cloud, and I shoot a clear air toroid through it, and you will see a perfect black, subtle, perfect circle go through it. This is why when UFOs go through clouds or various other things, you see nothing. They open it up like a, the, the mitral valve in the heart. They go like that, and they just cut a hole and close it right behind them. They don't make any swish, any wake, nothing. No sound wave, no sound barrier. That's because of what you're seeing here. Now watch closely, it's subtle. Did you see it? Didn't see my hand move, did you? Right in the center, down at the bottom. There you go, you see? See, now I've slowed it up so you can see how I've reversed it back and forth. Watch how it acts like a valve. Okay. A couple more just to show you. It doesn't really do a lot of damage. In fact, when I've fired these things across a room like that, I've had candles 30 feet away over on this side here because candle flame is very sensitive. Uh, you know, to motion, and I'll have the candle flame over there and shoot that way, and as the donut passes like this, the candle flame goes and bows toward the, the donut passing. The shock wave is there, but the energy stays in the center. A very, very efficient thing. Now, here's that micro valve thing I was talking about. Clear one going through like that. See how it cuts a perfect hole? If you have a ship like that, it does that with gravity, it does it with uh, clouds, it does it with water. Um, fascinating, isn't it? So what do we do in the evenings at home? Uh, yeah. I'll tell you what, my wife is going to kill me if I keep playing with that Coke bottle because sometimes on the computer I'll take a ruler and I'll snap it like that and make these little beads form and I'll go thump, 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 thump. So if you do it another time, I'm going to shoot you. Yeah. <laughs> True, isn't it, Holly? <laughs> All right, now. I took some notes at one of the meetings because we weren't allowed to uh, film or record anything in one of my uh, briefings. All right. In one of my briefings um, in the project here, and what you're going to see is a page of my notes here, um, which show what I was, I was drawing, what I was being shown, um, with the top off of the 30-foot diameter craft and with one of the sections removed so I could see inside the inductor. And this is uh, what I uh, put down on paper that day. You can see the, um, the arch I was telling you about is there. It's exaggerated a bit, it's a little thinner. Uh, the core section here with the, uh, the uh, main ring toroid. Uh, this one here with a, uh, like a Faraday cage, it wasn't exactly that, but that's what it's for. This uh, also held the superstructure onto the top of the craft. And there you can see some more of it there. I 
had correspondence and, and talked with a man named Townsend Brown and also got a hold of his uh, lab film from uh, the Bonson Corporation in 1958. I have one of the only two copies in existence. And I discussed the Philadelphia experiment and a number of other things with uh, Dr. Brown when he was in Catalina Island, California before he died. Um, Townsend filmed here was um, at the Bonson Corporation uh, in Salem and uh, at that time, he was trying to generate anti-gravity uh, using the bifuel brown effect. Um, he had failed to, s to understand that you have to recirculate your wake like a smoke ring. So he was trying to do brute force, as many of them are still trying to do. But with a smoke ring and with charged particles, if I push out this way and the wake of my pushing comes around behind me into my intakes and adds to my energy, I use a lot less energy to go forward. In fact, it's like going, I, I reckon it's like going into a, a saloon bar in the Wild West. Break your boots and your guns and you come up to the saloon door, it's packed. Hello, bar, I'm here! And you shove the door open, you're going to get a little resistance. But if you come up to the thing and you open the door, it's packed, you say, oh, excuse me, fellas, could I just move in here? No resistance in essence and you get in. So what you do is you make a place for yourself in the air or in a gravitational field before you get there. You scoop out a hole. You put yourself in it and it closes behind you and there's no pushing weight, there's no sound barrier, there's no light barrier in fact. We can go many times the speed of light using this concept in space. Brown tried a toroid coil in his, I've got his lab notes, his books as well, lab books. Uh, over here it was called the, uh, the beta uh, machine, this was generating his high voltage 100,000 volt charges that were generating these arcs on this. This saucer here, I've held it, it was about three feet in diameter. This coil, he would slip on top of that and they would put high charge through it, but it was only half of the solution. If he had done the other coil and had known to do it, where he wrapped it another coil like this and put those in phase, he would have had anti-gravity in a big way. He was that close, that close. I have a great deal of respect for the work that Dr. <coughs> Brown did. And I, as I say, I'm privileged to have access to all of that stuff. This is some of his note work on the board um, for the design of the craft. Some of his vacuum testing on the lower left and uh, some of the high voltage testing before they put the coils on the top. <coughs> and that is a real deal. That's not an animation and that was just finished last week in California by one of our associates. We are making working models of these things to show you. So it is real. You can do it. Chris Craw did that. How far do you think the government has progressed with this? The government, per se, has little say in it. This was a supranational operation. My control agent in Australia was Sir John Williams, a Welshman, um, Captain Sir John Williams. He's now deceased. Um, and he was under the, uh, uh, the advice or counsel of uh, Dr. Edward Teller. In Russia, Teller's counterpart was Dr. Uh, Andrei Sakharov. Uh, I forget who the guy in West Germany was, uh, or in England, or Norway, Canada, but there, there were a few guys around. Anyway, these sat above uh, elected governments because elected governments come and go and they leak like a sieve. So, uh, well, they do. And uh, these gentlemen that I worked for were the invisible government you speak of, the Illuminati. And uh, we parted ways after it only been in the program for a short while, but, uh, and they also tried to put me at the bottom of a mine shaft about 5,000 feet deep. Now, I did manage to get away, obviously, uh, but they did manage to keep me out of the United States and telling you any of this for 30 years. Uh, they just gave me my citizenship and passport back in 2001. Spent 30 years in Australia waiting for the time to come back. There's a lot more to the story. Obviously, in one hour, I can't do that. So I'm hitting the highlights of this, and now I'm going to go very quickly to... Am I, what's my time like? I can't read this watch. How much time have I got left? Five, oh, five or ten minutes. All right. Uh, all right. Let's... Um, we'll skip one section here. And we'll go to free energy. There are a couple of things, the anti-gravity, the alien card, and free energy that people have been banting around wanting to know how you do it and where it is, and there's all kinds of stuff about zero-point energy and magic this and over-unity that, and nobody's come up with a working product for you. Well, they've had working product since the mid-50s. 
there are two main sources of this quote-unquote free energy. It's cheap, but it's not free. The sun 